On November 2, 1936, at Alexandra Palace in North London, the world's first regular public high-definition service, the BBC television service, was born. On the same day, a 15-minute documentary, Television Comes to London, was broadcast on the channel's evening schedule, marking the broadcast of the first BBC television documentary, also the first television documentary in the United Kingdom. In the late 1940s and early 1950s, there were many war documentaries portraying the Allied operation in World War II. With the advent of the smaller camera in the 1960s, a wider range of television documentaries appeared, including natural history and wildlife. After the explosion of social and political effects by television documentaries in the 1960s and 1980s, the streaming service became the majority of cultural programming. Modern television documents now cover sports, health, economics, social media, and celebrity topics. However, in today's BBC quality television documentary production, a director or a team of directors will propose a topic and present it to the department head for approval. Budget, market acceptance, subject reputations, and other factors must be considered. Once the revision are completed, the production team will develop a small sample with the delightful copy for the sales team. To begin with, the BBC, as the UK's first radio and television station, plainly declines in its royal charters, dating from 1927 to the 2017. That the license fees are the BBC's primary source of income. As things stand, Anyone in the UK who wants to watch or record live television on any channel, as well as download or view any BBC show on iPlayer, must pay a 159 television license fee, which covers two-thirds of the BBC's operating costs. That is, unlike other TV producers, BBC does not need to consider advertising to raise funds for its TV documentaries. The great thing is a filmmaker, with the BBC, we can make films, entire films, which don't have commercial breaks in the middle of them. And that's great as a filmmaker. It's more challenging as a filmmaker because your narrative has to work very hard. You have to be able to draw people in and keep them the entire time. So, uh, for a filmmaker, wonderful. In contrast, following the Television Act 1954, ITV, the world's first independently owned commercial television program, began broadcasting in 1955. ITV and private broadcasters like Channel 4 found the documentaries differently than the BBC. With total advertising revenues of 195 million in 2021, ITV has the largest share of the UK TV advertising market. Whereas Channel 4's digital advertising revenues are 161 million, accounting for 17% of total revenues. Advertising revenue is very important for commercial TV programs like ITV and Channel 4, which have to run on their own. For documentaries, which are less profitable, there are a lot of difference in how commercial television makes documentaries compared to the BBC. I think the thing as a filmmaker is that commercial television will probably only attract a certain kind of documentary filmmaker. It has to be a documentary that appeals to the masses. It can't be harder current affairs, say. It has to be cops. It has to be some mainstream idea of... And they'll tend to have soapy docs, what we call soapy docs, which are a series, like uh, Police is one of them, uh, you know, Prison, or um, some kind of rather sensational aspect or story, because it's going to get a mass audience. The genre is the first thing commercial television documentaries notice. Public issues including police, crime, health, and sports are frequently included in their documentaries. Basically, they develop the documentaries based on business and audience demand. In the case of Channel 4, TV shows are commissioned by Channel's genre commissioning departments, including factuals, documentary, drama, and comedy, 
also the news and the current affairs and so on. But a multi-platform strategies necessities a commissioning structure with small cross-sectoral collaboration and joint commission decisions. Even if it's a documentary, both the entertainment and the drama programming department will have to make decisions. This means that there will be a wide range of interesting topics and continents. Commercial television, they have got high demands. They know exactly when you lose the audience, how to attract it, how to keep it, and of course quite often, which filmmakers find hard, particularly hardened documentary filmmakers makers like me, yeah. is when it comes to a commercial break, yeah. um, you have to end on a hook yeah. to make people want to watch. And then you also, when you start the next piece of your film, yeah. you've got to be aware that you've got new audiences that could be dropping in. So you have to repeat yourself quite often. You actually literally have to repeat the same thing you said before. As a filmmaker, that's annoying. When you come to play back the film to audiences later on in your life, you find it annoying because there's great black holes in the middle of everything. Um, but that's the demands of commercial television. They know exactly how long the first piece should be. Once they attract people within a few minutes, commercial break. When they come back, they're willing, once they think they've got the audience hooked, they'll have a longer session before a commercial break. And when you've got people coming towards the hook at the end, guess what? Another commercial break. Ad insertion, along with subject selection, can be problematic for commercial television documentaries. While documentaries are often less expensive to produce than dramas, the opportunity cost of lost advertising revenue for commercial television networks like ITV and Channel 4 is far higher. As a result, commercial televisions may avoid making the high quality and hardcore documentaries. From an advertiser's point of view, good documentaries don't matter, said Tom Lusmo, head of Channel 4's New Medium Fund at the 2009 Sheffield Documentary Festival. Therefore, Producers must be extremely cautious when integrating commercials in documentaries. Sponsors are also a major source of funding for commercial documentary production, limiting topic matter and continent alternatives. Channel 4's documentaries, for example, are sponsored by Honda, and its cuisine programs are sponsored by Tropicana and Aplo. Post Matters India, a Channel 5 travel show, was backed by the Continental Tires. On the other hand, with the growth of subscription-based streaming servers like Netflix and YouTube, they are producing documentary content in a different way than commercial television like ITV and BBC. They attract customers by using original content such as TV series and films, which then fund the production of documentaries, which are generally good. Well, I think the good thing about Netflix, much to our surprise, is that in, in reality, when people subscribe to it, yeah. uh, they will watch it, won't they? You know, where, where's the advertising in Netflix? It's kind of a few advertisements. Yeah, but it's not, it's, not, it's not driven by commercial, yeah. commercial advertising, is it? It's, it's, it's subscription. Yes. But some people believe that the whole Netflix bubble is going to burst. That in reality, they're not actually making any money, they're losing money. So, going back to the beginning, does the BBC appear old-fashioned in comparison to the ITV and Channel 4, which are both actively updating themselves, and also the Netflix, which is rapidly rising and growing? I think it's quite important that the country keeps the BBC. Uh, and there's a lot of people, uh, Tories, the Conservative Party are out to nobble the BBC. But I think no one really realises that in reality, since the BBC, public television, um, public service television, which is what it's what it take, basically it is, um, has kept a lot of the commercial stations in check all these years. Yeah. You know, it's forced them to be, to cater for the masses instead of for the, what we call the common lowest denominator, yeah. you know, mass audiences. Yeah. And I think that would be a real tragedy if the BBC lost its independence and only could only get its money via advertising. In reality, the BBC is also actively counting the younger audience. The BBC has seen the potential of the genre based on the success of entertainment-oriented factual programs like Airport and Venturier School 
in 1996 by making a hugely popular reality show. As business-related shows have become more popular on TV, the success of shows like The Apprentice shows how business-related shows have changed over time. The programs on BBC used to be news and current events, but now they are more likely a, a mixture of documentary and entertainment program. A new kind of program appeared, factual entertainment programs. Let's also wait and see what the future holds. A small, high-quality, diverse and integrated factual programming is made, and the definition of documentary is bordered in a competitive market. But it doesn't mean that the series and hardcore independent documentary were disappeared. To preserve an environment, let the producers to make the true independent documentaries is also the mission of the BBC.